Okay, so this is going to be a video about um, five things that you should know when you're studying for the MCAT. Five main things that I truly believe if you don't know before going into studying for the MCAT, um, I don't know how well you're going to do. So these are like actually really important. When you're taking advice, definitely take advice from people who tell you how well they did. Um, just because it would be like Kaplan selling you a product and they're saying like, oh, you're going to do well, but there's no guarantee of how well you'll do, how well their students did in the high 80s percentile now if you're looking for somebody who's going to give you advice who's like in the high 90s or whatever by all means please exit this video and go do that um, but having gone through medical school there are things that I could change there's things that I did well on of course on the MCAT because I mean I still got in I was above average and stuff like that um, so these I mean I, I would just really try to take these five tips the first thing you need to know is um, the exam content and how the exam is structured um, if you forget something in the exam content, obviously you're going to lose a lot of points just because you didn't study that one section. So just, I'm just going to briefly go over the, like, the sections of the MCAT. So there's the biological section, and this is going to include um, basic biology, uh, O-chem, inorganic chemistry, which is just like general chemistry, and then biochem. So the next section is chemistry and physics, which will also include much more inorganic chem and then um, more physics as well. Uh, I would definitely like know your uh, equations for physics. Uh, really know those cold and at the beginning of your exam, write those down really quickly uh, for this section. Um, again, this will also have 59 questions. Um, it's 95 minutes. There's going to be passages as well as questions. Um, the next part, um, which is going to be a little bit newer, is the psychology section, which includes like behavioral science, um, sort of DSM criteria things. And then last but not least, it's the verbal reasoning or the critical analysis, uh, like the reasoning skills part. Uh, this is going to be a few less questions. It's 53 questions, 90 minutes. Um, it's pretty much reading a passage, taking information from that passage, and then trying to answer the questions based on what you read. Uh, this is arguably the hardest section for people because it a little bit of is kind of intrinsic. It's how well you can comprehend uh, reading stuff, really. I mean, there's not much getting around that. There's not really a way to study for that. There's a way to prepare for it, uh, which I'll include in like a different video on how to really tackle each of these sections. But I just wanted to give you a little brief overview. So that was uh, number one. two is the type of questions and how to tackle a multiple choice question. Um, so again, so this is kind of part of the layout as well is to know that some of the passages, let's say in the bio section, there's going to be passages and you're supposed to answer questions based on the information given to you in the passage. So those doesn't require much of outside knowledge usually. Uh, that's called a discrete question that requires purely outside knowledge of something that you studied. These passage questions are a little bit of a mix of something that you learned outside while studying for the MCAT and something that you learned from the passage itself. Um, so those are the passage questions. And sometimes they'll throw in discrete questions in those. Like you'll have five questions based on the passage. One of those will be like a discrete question, like what's a B cell? So you're gonna have to just know that. And then others, sections inside the biochemistry section or the biology section i should say are purely discrete questions so just a list of four and you just have to know those and read the question and answer it um you know like something about the krebs cycle um something about a cell and like the contents of inside of a cell like organelle inside a cell has its own dna or something like that and you should definitely be able to answer that by the way thing about a multiple choice question and, and going into medicine you're gonna have to do multiple choice questions like pretty much for the rest of your life like, this is not the only big exam that you're going to have to take. When you go into medical school, there's three USMLE step exams you're going to have to take. Those are all multiple choice. Um, the thing about a multiple choice question is, is they're kind of harder, but they're easy. There's pros and cons, okay? The answer is there in front of you. It's really important that you eliminate wrong answers, and it's really important that you choose the most obvious answer. Uh, for example, uh, if you guys watch, like, How to Be a Millionaire, there's usually an answer that's so obvious, like up until the 15,000s and 20,000s, and all the other answers are sort of like really dumb, like why would they even choose that answer? But somebody will always say, oh, that answer is too obvious, like I don't think that's the right answer. No, on board exams, they're not trying to trick you. If there's something that's obvious, given the information that you're presented with in the stem of the question, if there is an obvious answer, that is always the right answer. If there is information that was given to you that changes that right answer, therefore, the most obvious answer, I guess, isn't the right answer, but it has to be based on the information that's given to you. But most of the time, they will give you, they're not trying to trick you necessarily. It is the most obvious answer, okay? 
Number three, um, if you've chosen a course to take, for example, Kaplan, and they give you a number of books, study those like crazy and use those as your reference. Do not buy Princeton or something like that or buy like multiple things and then study those books. That's not going to help you. The exam content and the content in those books are the same. It's organized differently and you need to learn that organization so you can find something rapidly in the book and really learn those books. Um, don't use multiple resources. Stick with one and really study those well. I can't tell you how many times like I've seen people who trip up and they study so many different resources and that will really mess you up. Okay, so that's a really important learning time management and being able to really split up your days and really put time towards studying for the MCAT. Because some of you might be an undergrad and be taking classes and stuff like that. Make sure you put like two or three hours aside for studying for the MCAT if you're coming up like a couple months before your test. And I know you should be studying this like starting out, of course, throughout undergrad because you're learning all of those basic things. But um, in your dedicated three month period, be putting time away. And then the next part, which is still part of point four, is to study up until the day of your MCAT. Um, I don't know why people say a week before your MCAT or something like that, like, don't study anything, like, just take off, like, take a vacation. No. Uh, people who run a marathon, like, they don't just not run for a week, necessarily. That week leading up, they're still warming up. They're still stretching. Uh, you know, the day before, they might not run, like, 23 miles or anything like that. I'm not expecting you to do a bunch of questions, if, like, the day before your MCAT. But be warming up until the day of your MCAT. And on the day of your MCAT, in the morning, wake up early and start warming up. Start doing those stretches that somebody running a marathon would do. The morning of a marathon, they're going to be doing stretches. They might do a little jog and, like, some jumping jacks or something like that. Um, I haven't personally done a marathon. I've done a half. But, like, I'll tell you, I do those things and I, I warm up the day until. So scratch that whole thing about not studying the day before. Um, it might be a little bit stressful the day before. I mean, hang out with some friends at some point during the day. But at during that day, spend some time and review some questions, okay? That'll help you on exam day. Um, this is the most important point, and um, this is based on my experience in medical school. Having, looking back to my MCAT, and I feel like I could st start studying these five points, especially this fifth point, and go back and like destroy this thing, but um, it's to do more questions. I mean, so many people just like, take their book and just like read it and sit there and I'm wondering like how do people really do that um, and I'm not saying don't read your book do that for review and definitely use your book while you're doing questions Kaplan and Princeton whatever freaking resource you're using they give you a question bank and they give you questions in order to test you they give you passages to practice deciphering that information and answering the questions that they give you do those that like I can't give you any better advice than that um, again, I will make another video that will like split up different sections and how to tackle those sections and certain points that might be difficult for you. But man, like if you can just do more questions in that way, instead of just sitting down and reading, um, go through those books using the questions because that'll be more, I don't know, engaging for you. It'll be more insightful for you. Like, for example, earlier in this video, I asked you a question. I was like, what organelle besides the nucleus in the cell like has its own DNA? And you had to think about it, and that's making you think. It's an incentive. It's active learning. That's it. Um, the answer is mitochondria, but I would have given you, it would have been like multiple choice and giving you certain answers. If you guys wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and subscribe just so I know how well I'm doing on these videos. Um, if you have any other topics that you want me to cover, please go ahead. Here's going to be a video about um, why the MCAT is so important. Um, you can go ahead and just watch that as well because I think that's good to know. So thanks.